This video is gonna be a little bit different than anything else that I've ever done on this channel. I was actually creating this for my content assistant who's gonna help me with some really quick little edits on the videos that I make that are screen shares like this one. I wanna show them how to make things really clear using screen flow. I use call outs and a bunch of different little actions that make my videos stand out and easier to follow. As an affiliate marketer, this is super powerful because it helps you add clarity to any of the tutorials that you use. If you sell something that's a subscription internet software, this can be really powerful and really help your conversions by showing people how to actually work the tools that you use. Even if it's not from a sales point, showing people how to do things is gonna really help retention. So that's why I make videos about all the tools that I promote. It's not just to sell them, it's to keep people using them and finding how to actually make them work for them. Part of that is my clear tutorials that I make with ScreenFlow. In this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. But a quick word. Hey there. Nate wishes more people would subscribe when he asks. But YouTube isn't a fairy tale world. So he hired me, Morgan Freeman, Fiverr Impersonator. So what do you say? If you want weekly affiliate marketing tutorials as crystal clear as my voice, smash that subscribe button. Andy Dufresne would. Wow. What a nice introduction, Morgan Freeman. Fiverr impersonator. All right, let's hop into my screen so I can show you ScreenFlow. This is what ScreenFlow looks like. To get the files in here, you can either record them in ScreenFlow directly on your computer, which is up here. Right now I'm actually recording inside of ScreenFlow, which is super meta. Or I can just drag and drop various media and video types into the library or directly to the timeline. Over here is the timeline. This is a video that I've been working on that needs a lot of annotations because it's kind of a tech video and not everyone watches videos on the full desktop. If you're watching this on a tablet or maybe your iPhone, it can be really hard to follow along. So we wanna make it as easy as possible for everybody to follow along with our videos. So we do a couple of things. First, most of my annotations come on the screen itself. So that would be this track right here. And this one is where the actual screen recording is. Just to make it a little bit easier, let's remove the track with my webcam so that doesn't get in the way. We have a little bit more space to work. Go ahead and detach the audio. I'm just gonna really kind of wreck this file and then I've made a copy of it, so I'll edit the one that I have a copy of. But for now, let's go ahead and just kill my face there so that when we edit it, you can only see the screen, all right? And then depending on what area of the screen we're working on, you want to use the zoom up and down, down here at the bottom. So if I'm making changes to the timeline that are very small, I want to zoom in pretty far. All right. And then also we can drag the timeline. So if we can make it smaller or bigger, and that's super important, very helpful, especially when you want to see the screen part a little bit bigger. So I'm going to press command plus, and it's going to make the screen bigger. Right? So I can do two things. I can zoom in and out with the timeline down here, and I can also zoom in and out on the video. Both of those are super important when it comes to making these and making them as clear as possible. So there's a couple of things that we can do. First is actions. Actions involve selecting a part of the timeline, coming up to video, clicking action, and now let's zoom in a little bit. I'm just gonna go ahead and make this bigger so you can see it a little bit better. The action is gonna be a starting point and an ending point. So right now the action does nothing because it has no clear ending point. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom out and let's say that I wanna zoom in on this cell zone part here. I can do this and notice that I selected this at the end of the action on the timeline. So that is gonna show where it's going to end so now when we press play, it's gonna start at the beginning point, which is this. It's gonna take us all the way through to that end point that I just created. Like that. But that was too slow, so we need to speed it up. We can do that in two ways. We can either drag it to the left or drag it from the right. We just wanna make this yellow rectangle smaller, right? So the smaller it is, the faster it's gonna move. So now let's watch it. Boom, that makes a lot more sense, right? 
looks way better. You don't want to be too slow. If you do want to be slow, just make that nice and long. If you want to be quick, make it nice and tight. Drag left or right, depending on your needs. And if we want to get it to go back, we just add a second action here, and then we do the reverse of what we just did. And make it smaller and fit it right back into 100% of the screen. There we go. So now let's watch the whole thing. Zooms in, little pause, zooms out. And let's say that I want to make that zoom out a little bit faster. I can do that. And if I want to zoom out without the zoom, if I just want to go straight into that, I can split this and then I can just select scale to fit. So now it's going to be very abrupt, but it's going to go right back. Watch. Boom. Okay. So this was how it was at the end. And right here at the split, it goes back to normal. So that's how you adjust the size with an action, but we can adjust a lot more than just the size. We can adjust things like the color or the saturation, anything that you see in the video section, we can edit that as an action. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So let's say that we wanted to make the brightness go down, which in this case would be a terrible idea, but just for the purpose of it, let's show you what, what that would look like. Let's say that I wanted to call out some text that would come up and maybe be in white. I do that a lot. So it's going to pan from full brightness down to that brightness level that I set. And that's going to be at the end point. It's going to look really nice. So let's go ahead and just remove that. Let's go on to the next part, which is callouts. They are up here on this, on this little mouse with a circle on it. And we have a number of callouts that we can do. And you've been watching me do callouts this entire video. So it's pretty cool. But what we need to do is select where we want the callouts to be. So let's say we want them to be on this part of the frame where it starts at about three minutes and 15 seconds. And then we can click on action just like we did with the movement action on the video. And it's going to start by default by showing the mouse cursor. Okay, so let's start there. So let's go ahead and let's say that I'm just using the mouse action, but I want to, to make it more clear where my mouse is. So I might zoom up. So this is going to take anything that the mouse is on. It's going to zoom it, right? So that doesn't really help here. It makes it a little bit kind of actually awful to look at. So let's change that. Let's go back to zoom down and then let's add a border to it. So a blue border is going to be added to the perimeter of the mouse. And we can do a lot of stuff with that. We can change the outline pixel size. We can change how big the border is around. So how much of a perimeter it's actually covering. We can add a shadow. We can do feathering in and out durations. I can also change the color. The build in and build out durations, those are important. They make it look more smooth. So I usually set this to about 0.3. So that's going to give it about 0.3 seconds of time before it appears. So it's going to, just like the action, take 0.3 seconds to fully appear. See how it slowly comes in to the frame? It doesn't come in all at once, right? And then to keep it, I would have to drag it all the way across. An important thing to keep in mind is that you can only have one type of call out per track. So you can't stack call out. So I couldn't do a mouse cursor call out and a freehand zoom in, which I'll show you what the freehand is here in a second. So be mindful of that. Don't try to do mouse cursor and zoom in. Unfortunately, it's just kind of a limitation of the software, but it's really not necessary to do both. I've never found a need to do both of those at the same time. You can, however, do multiple freehand callouts at the same time. I'll show you how to do that. Let's get into those. All right, so now let's say that I want to zoom in on this part of the screen where I'm talking about cell zone review. What I would do is I'd come up to action and we could do foreground window. I almost never use that one. What I do use is freehand. And when you do freehand, you have a couple of options. You have the circular, which is going to be like literally freehand where I'm drawing in what I want people to see, which is only helpful if I'm doing something like really small, but even then it looks really choppy and weird. So I don't like using that one. I like using the rectangular one, which goes like this. Okay. So by default, it's going to start off with a 75 opacity. So when you add that, if you don't do anything else, it's just going to go Boom. And then it, it saves that spot. So it doesn't track where you added it. So if, if you're scrolling, that's not a good option. You might want to do something like come down to the timeline 
if you really want to call focus to one thing for an extended amount of time, you might want to clip. Let's clip that. Select this frame. Then we might want to add a freeze frame. And then we might add our callout action onto the freeze frame. You can copy and paste the actions, by the way, which is a really cool, really helpful feature. Like right here, I've copied it and pasted it from where I had it before. So now there will be no scrolling. And if the scrolling wasn't a necessary part of the video, that's cool. All right, so I don't, I still don't love that. So let's go a step further. Let's do the same thing with the call out. We're doing freehand, but let's make it pop a little bit more and let's make it a little bit more smooth. So to add smoothness to it, so it's not just super choppy where it goes from a full screen, regular opacity to boom, serious 75 opacity and then focusing on one spot. Let's do the build in duration. And if I wanted to add the feather again, that's going to be like those that shadowy on the outskirts, which is kind of cool, honestly. I just don't I don't really mess with it. So now it's going to look a little bit more like this. So the build in and the build out are both there over here. 0.3 seconds, 0.3 seconds. Those are pretty standard times that I usually use. But let's say that we don't want to use opacity. Let's say we want to use blurred background. We can do that. So now everything else that is behind it is blurred. It doesn't look as good. Actually, I would never use that. I don't like that. But another great use of this is the ability to blur what you select. Sometimes you have sensitive information like passwords or API keys you need to hide. So what we can do is we can add the action. Freehand. We select the area that we want to blur out. Let's just, for whatever reason, say it's this. Let's go ahead and put the opacity back. But then I'm going to turn the blur up. So now that's totally blurred out. Be super careful with this. If you really need to blur something, make sure your in and out durations are zero because if they're not, whatever it is you're trying to hide is gonna appear for a second. Also be sure that you're not scrolling. Remember the annotations don't move with the content behind the page. So if you scroll, you might accidentally scroll outside of the blur and that is a good way to accidentally show everyone whatever it is you were trying to hide. So it'd be a good time to use that freeze frame trick that I showed you so you know that the image is still and you know that it's blurred out completely. Nothing's moving. Let's go back to the basic callouts. I think by default, the opacity is a little bit too dark for most cases, but what we can do is we can lower the opacity and then we can do something else to bring a little bit more attention to this. We can do a subtle little zoom or we can do a big zoom. And then I can also add a shadow. So if we're going to add the shadow, we'd want to remove the feathering. It's going to look a little bit weird. Okay. And then that, so that zoom is going to be really big. So I usually keep it in the screen like that. Okay. So let's see what that looks like. That looks pretty good. All right. Let's take it a step further. Let's say this was so important that I wanted to even draw an arrow. Come into this little pencil icon and annotations, click plus, click the line. I'm gonna choose an arrow. Let's change this color to red. I'm gonna click on the screen where I want it. I'm gonna drag. And now if you notice, this is now a new part of the timeline. It's not on the same channel as, as the annotation is. So this is coming in on its own. And now let's combine annotations with animations. So we already covered how to do video animations. We can do those with these annotations as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the track that has the arrow on it, add the action, start from the beginning, and let's start the scale at almost zero. So now when it plays, it's going to pop in there like that. Pretty cool. That's not the coolest animation you can do. You can make that look a lot better. One last thing that I want to cover is that you can actually call out multiple things at the same time. I mentioned earlier that you can't have multiple different call outs on the same track, but you can have the same call out multiple times. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's say that I wanted to zoom up on something. So let's just select this. Let's say there are two elements here that I wanted to do a zoom call out on. All right, so I would do what I normally do. I just come to the call out, click action. Let's 
let's say they're both going to be freehand. So let's say I want to call out this, right? But I want to call out one more thing. So I'm just going to stay on the area and I'm just going to select whatever else I want. If I want to do more, I can do more. This is also great. You can do this with blur. If you have a lot of different things to blur out at the same time all across your screen, you can do this and have them all on there at the same time. It's really cool. So just know that you can't have multiple types of callouts. There are some workarounds like cloning the track and then cropping things. But for the most part, you just need to work within the limitations. I've never really found a need to have multiple different types of callouts. But this is very important. You can have multiple segments here of the same type of callout. Hopefully that makes sense. But just know that you can add animations to any element that you put in here, including annotations. All right, guys, that is pretty much everything that I do inside of ScreenFlow. There's so much more involved with ScreenFlow and I highly recommend that if you use it, you check out the free program that they offer. They have a completely free training inside of there. I'm not an affiliate for ScreenFlow or anything. It's just what I use and I find it really, really helpful. And I actually did take their free program back when I first bought it, when it was, I believe, ScreenFlow 6 or 7. And it has gotten a lot better since then. You can do a lot of cool stuff. If you're an affiliate marketer and you're trying to create great tutorials or you're a course creator and you want to make sure that all of the stuff that you do that's a screen recording looks great and is as crystal clear as possible, check out ScreenFlow. Implement these things I just showed you. All right, speaking of crystal clarity, if you guys enjoy crystal clear affiliate marketing tutorials, be sure to hit subscribe. I will see you all in the next video. Hey, it's me again. Did you subscribe yet? I need this Fiverr gig to work, or I'll have to film another Dolphin Tail movie. So go on, help a brother out, and slap that subscribe button.